uh, recording starts. Please, over. It's all over to you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Mohamed. Uh, hello, everybody, and thank you for being here today. Uh, I think the, the screen is already uh, been shared, so let me know that. Yes, okay, yes, okay. yes, yes. Now we can see you and thank we can you. see the screen. Thank you. No worries. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Well, uh, let's get started. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Nicolas Fernandez. Um, I am Microsoft MVP in business application. I'm a, and I'm also pre-sales director in Infoban uh, here in Spain. Uh, at the end of, of the session, I'll, I'll share also some contact information for, for us to be connected. Uh, jumping into the agenda. Well, uh, customer insight in, in, in an hour is, is, a quick, is a big challenge because there is a lot to, to tell and there is a, a lot of dead time uh, between the configuration. So I, I did it and I recorded the, the part of the demo, uh, but it's, it, it's part of the presentation that, that we're going to see today. Uh, well, we'll start with an introduction of what is uh, the customer data platform and what is customer insight. We'll jump into the solution architecture, but it's not going to be a, a deep dive. It's going to be a quick review on, on the solution architecture. Then we are going to uh, review step by step on how to start working with customer insight. Uh, what do you need to do? And finally, we'll uh, review also the integration scenarios between customer insights and the Power Platform and Dynamics 365 customer engagement. So, uh, what is ca ca customer data platform? Well, the customer data platform allows organizations to um, solve the problem of having this connected information of the customer between a lot of uh, systems. Uh, a, a CDP uh, is a key uh, for deliver right engagement to the right person on the right time, and also to have a personalized engagement with them on every touch point that the customer has with the company. It doesn't matter if it's with marketing, sales, or, or, or service. Uh, Microsoft launched uh, the, their own customer that platform uh, with customers insight. Uh, and then we have also product insight last year joining into the CDP. For a few months, we have also market insight, but right now it's it's deprecated. So we, we have these two solutions into the customer that platform uh, in Microsoft. So why a company should care about this? Well, every company has some business drivers, right? Maybe they want to grow, maybe they want to reduce cost, and there are many ways to achieve it. Uh, but the truth is that uh, without knowing without having the right data and the right insights, it's quite difficult. So knowing and correct, correctly measuring all the right KPIs on a company, they will be able to uh, improve the customer experience, uh, reduce the cost of running business, or just having uh, an improved man management of information to drive uh, the right decisions. And th this, this is quite important on, on these days. What makes the difference with customer insight and other solutions? Well, and the third thing to understand is that uh, the most likely scenario is that all the companies have uh, the, the information of the customers spread through uh, many data sources with no way to uh, see the, a, a unique customer database or to show in the, uh, there's no showing taxonomy to describe the customers, the journey on how they, they, they interact with, with the company. And customer insights tries to, uh, or achieves, uh, trying to uh, get a unique customer profiles, uh, bringing all the information from the different data sources, mapping the customer's uh, information and merging it into uh, the unique the, the famous golden record that we all want to, to get. And this is something that if you come from Dynamics CRM, Dynamics 365 customer engagement, this is something we always uh, tell our customers or we used to tell our customers that they, they could achieve it with uh, CRM. But the truth is that it was really difficult to actually have, have it done. 
with customer insight, we will be able to uh, get all this information together with uh, really low uh, for comparing with all the big integration uh, project that we used to face with uh, Dynamics CRM. So um, this is what Customer Insight actually is. It allows companies to empower every organization to unify and understand the customer data. And this is really important today with all the current global situation. It's important to know the, the customers to improve the interactions and being more uh, proactive to help them. And this is, this is going to be more business for, for the company. So uh, there are three key benefits uh, from using and implementing customer insights. Uh, the first one is obviously having this real uh, 360 degrees uh, view of the customer or the holistic view of, on, on the customer. And we'll be able to get this by connecting all this information really easily and transforming this information, working with this information and reaching the uh, data uh, with Microsoft Graph and putting some uh, data to work for us. Then we will be able to uh, unlock insights from, from one side and take actions from the other. And this is important because we will be able to predict our customers' intents. Uh, we will be able to uh, see the trends and to detect uh, patterns on the behavior of the customers. And then we, 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 we will uh, be working with segments. We will work in uh, the data to improve our process, business processes, to deliver better experiences for our customer through all the channels and to automate all the uh, customer centric experiences and processes with of course, Dynamics 365, but it's not, it's not an, a requirement, uh, of course. Uh, the the first uh, benefit is the possibility to adapt and, st and extend. You have customer insight, but you probably want to uh, use this data on your own way. And that's possible by connecting with custom applications. And we'll see some examples on, we'll see how to do it with uh, the Power Platform and with Dynamics 365. So, uh, there are a few uh, key differenti di differenti ooh, sorry. differentiators, sorry, for that, <laughs> uh, for customer insights. Uh, the first one is, it is a SaaS solution. So it's software as a service. Uh, it's a kind of plug and play uh, solution that you just have to configure. Uh, you don't need any development skills, any technical skills. Actually, it's ready for the business users to run it. Uh, you can connect it with any operational CRM that you have on your organization. You don't need Dynamics 365 customer engagement. You will take a lot of uh, advantage if used, but uh, you don't need it. Uh, so if you have a Salesforce or any other kind of CRM, you can implement Dynamics 365 customer insights and, and still have a lot of benefits. Then uh, I mentioned before the if we compare an implementation of customer insight with uh, an implementation of any CRM that wants to get uh, the golden record and wants to get the true uh, holistic view of, of the customers, uh, there's a difference in the time to market. With customer insight, we're talking about weeks, not months or years. So this is quite important when we uh, are talking with a customer, when we're talking uh, with the project management on the on the project plan. Uh, the the task on the on this project on the implementation are quite simple if you compare it with a customer in integration project uh, from old school. So, which is the the, the approach that the customer insights bring? It, it, it's quite simple. Uh, you have your data. It's on your internal applications in, in external systems. Then you have connectors to bring this data into customer insights. You will have uh, to go through a, a unification process. This process will uh, allows you to 
uh, create this uh, unique uh, database of your of your customers, your profiles, and then you will uh, get in some insights by the analytics, by the uh, AI that you can bring into customer insight by building it in with uh, machine learning. We'll talk it uh, later. Uh, and finally, when you have all these insights, you're going through uh, from data to insights, and th it's a, a big uh, difference. And with these insights, you will be able to take action. And this action can be with uh, really strong uh, dashboards in Power BI to take decisions, or with applications that your uh, business users uh, can use uh, on their daily daily basis. So, in any implement, implementation of customer insights, there are a few uh, phases. You have to bring the information into Dynamics Free, uh, Freakify Customer Insights. You have to work and unify this information by mapping, matching, and finally, uh, you have the uh, conflation uh, stage. Then you can work this uh, information and, and reach it with uh, some capabilities that the Freakify customer engagement uh, brings. Uh, I'll talk this later. And then you have the insights to work, and then with that, those insights, you take actions. I know the, this is something I, I'm repeating on, on different slides, but this is really important. This is the value of customer insights. You have insights to take actions, and those actions are going to help the business. Um, on a higher level uh, view of the new analytical landscape, of course, we have our CRM with all the transactional data. We have uh, right now uh, omni-channel CRMs. If, if you have Dynamics Free 65 uh, with the omni-channel engagement hub, we will, you will be able to have uh, all the different uh, channels through the processes on, on the CRM, you have your analytical applications, and then you have the ERP on, on all the other information on the, on the legacy systems. And Customer Insights brings uh, all this information to provide uh, more uh, behavioral uh, customer data into the, the decisions, into the, the business decision makers to, to provide more insights on, on that. And from an architect's point of view, we'll, we'll have our consumption layer and from who are uh, functional consultants or, or solution architects, uh, this is uh, the, the, most likely the, the, the layer that they are going to feel more comfortable. Uh, then we have the API layer uh, to control it. And we have the processing layer where all the, let me use the, the term magic happens. Uh, of course, it's on Azure from uh, the Azure Data Lake that uh, where you, you uh, have the, your data and you, you can bring your own Data Lake if you want, or you can use the Data Lake that Customer Insight creates. Then you have, of course, the machine learning and on, on all the power and scalability that Azure brings. So uh, getting into uh, how to work with uh, Dynamics Freestyle Customer Insights. The first stage is the ingestion. So you probably have a lot of um, data sources, a lot of touch points that the customer uh, get in, in, in touch, interact with you uh, from the marketing application where your customer is probably uh, an email to the website where you have the, probably the same email or other and a cookie. Uh, you have the points of sales, you have the loyalty card, you have all the social media interactions. Uh, maybe you have an application, a mobile application for your customers and uh, the customer logged into this application with Facebook uh, login and many, many other touch points that the customer used to interact with you or that you used to interact with your customer. And from all these uh, sources, we need to get the information into Dynamics 365 Customer Insights. And how do you do that? Well, the first thing is to select that source. Uh, as I mentioned, you, you can bring your own uh, Azure Data Lake with all the information. But if not, you, you can use Dataflow and you can use 
uh, out of the box tools to connect with multiple data sources. Then you have to transform the data and we, we will use in Power Query. So if you are used to work with Power BI, this is good news for you. Uh, of course, you, you can extend uh, with advanced editors with M language if you need. It's not my case. <laughs> and the, the result of that, the outcome is that uh, Customer Insight creates uh, an entity for each data set that you integrate or you connect with, with the system, it, it will create an entity. Uh, an important thing to know is uh, Customer Insight works with common data model. So, uh, it's it's really easy to integrate customer uh, with uh, with common data service. So bring something to the Dynamics Free Spy customer insight, and as I mentioned, uh, th this is going to be a uh, live like lip sync, uh, but not not really because it, it has no audio. It, it's the video I, I recorded earlier today uh, to have the the demo without any technical problem or or delay with the processing. So. We, we have to add a, a data source. We we will add it. We can connect with with a common data model for the initial data lake with common data service or import uh, the data. I'll just put some name. It is going, going to be the, the information from the e-commerce. Um, and then we will have to uh, connect it actually with the data source. Uh, the waiting times Sometimes here in customer insights are, are longer than, than we want, uh, but here is loaded. So uh, I choose the name. Now I have to choose the data source. There are many data sources from where I can I can bring the information. Uh, for this example, I, I am using all the data sets uh, provided by the customer insight in a day workshop. I recommend you to do it. Uh, so I'll just have to uh, paste the URL from this data source and go to next. Mm, the system will provide me uh, a preview uh, of the data. So if I put a, a wrong URL, I can go back, change it and, and go forward again. Uh, so I can see this information. I can validate if the, it's the correct data source. Uh, and then I have to transform the data. I don't have to but it's the it's the next step. So in this case, I'll I'll choose that the, I, I need to use the first row as a, as a header. So uh, as I mentioned, if you work with Power BI, this is really familiar for you. Uh, then um, I have to to change uh, some formats uh, of the of the fields of the of the data. In this case, this is date of birth. It's going to be a date type of data. Uh, then I have a created on type of data and it's on the back. And I will change it to uh, date time zone type of data. And as you can see on the left side, all the steps are recorded so it can be uh, reused. And now that is done, I only have to add the name of this query, of this data set. And I, I, I could do two things. I can, I, I can get another uh, data set, or I can go next and, and continue with, with the example. So if I go to home, I can get another data set, choose it from here and, and continue. But uh, for this example, I'm going to first finish this. I'll fast forward a little bit. And now I have this uh, data source created. Uh, I can see, well, it shows me when it's refreshed. Uh, it shows me the status of, of this data set. It shows me how many entities it has. And remember the, the, the amount of uh, data sets, it's, it's equivalent to the entities. So if I, if I want to change how the information is transformed, or if I want to add a new data set, I have to edit. It opens again the Power Query, and as I show uh, earlier, you can get another data set. It's going to be a, a text CSV. Uh, I'll paste the the new URL. Uh, 
And again, it will show me the preview data for me to choose to go uh, to say it's okay or, or to go back and change it. And now I have to uh, transform this uh, new query, this new data set. So the first thing, I don't have to go to transform to change and use the first row as, as a header. I, I have it right there. And then I have to, to fields. This one purchase on, it's going to be also a, a date time zone. And uh, I have the total price that I needed to be uh, a currency type uh, of data. And I should have I just have to change the name. Those are the e-commerce um, purchases. So with all, all that done, I can continue and it will uh, process um, again the the entire data source. So uh, if I jump a little in, in time, uh, this example has uh, four different data sources to work with. Uh, the process is the same, and I, I created it for for the, the next uh, exercises that that I need to be uh, to be done. So fast forward uh, on, on the demo, and now I, we have. The, all the data sources created and, and successfully synchronized. Uh, so we have the information and we have to continue with the process. The process continues with the uh, unification process and there are three steps, uh, there are the three M's, is the mapping, the matching and the merging. Uh, what are we doing with the mapping? Well, we just identify on each entity for customers entity, we, we identify uh, how to, uh, which, which, which is the primary key. Uh, then we have to go with matching and we will uh, set the criteria for uh, identify uh, and, and match the, the customer through, uh, through all the data sources. And finally, we have to merge and we, we, we can make some last uh, assessment before we merge the the customers. So we are jumping into customer inside again. Uh, we we are where we left before. We have the the four data sources, and we want to start uh, unifying. So on that uh, on data, well, we have the all the entities created. There are five entities because uh, one of the data sources has two data sets. And we can jump into Unify. Of course, there's no mapping uh, done uh, yet. And the thing that I need to choose is uh, the entities that I want to, to, to match and merge. So on each one, I have to select which is the primary key uh, to identify the customer. So in this case, we have the loyalty ID and the contact ID on, on, each, uh, on each one. And we just save. and we can continue with the unifying process. We, on the match tab, we have to set an order. And this is important because what we are seeing here is that the data from the e-commerce contact um, entity, it's, uh, it has a better quality from the second or the third or the fourth uh, entities. So I including all the records because I want all of them to, to be matching and what i have to do is to create a, a matching rule or, or a match rule uh, this is the the criteria on how i will uh, match the the contacts or the customers here so i'll choose the full name and email uh, conditions there are two conditions i i choose the the fields and then i uh, i can use a normalized uh, criteria that the customer insights provides in this case, for the full name, the, the, the correct uh, criteria is the type. And I have to choose the precision. So uh, how uh, exactly or how equal um, have to be both full names in this, in this case. And I have to do with the basic or the custom way. 
in the casting way, there is a value between uh, one and one hundred, uh, and then in in the basic uh, way, I have the low, medium, high, or, or exact. I'll do the same with the email. So I'll choose the fields email on both uh, entities. In this case, I won't uh, use any normalized criteria. And for the precision, I, I will use also the basic uh, option. And it's going to be high as well. So all done, I have one rule. I could add any, any all, all, all the rules and I can edit this rule uh, for this time. But I will run the, the matching. This can uh, be a little uh, slow. So fast forwarding, uh, we have now the matching already done. It, it shows me that I have more than 5,000 unique customers. Uh, there was uh, more than 4,000 match records. And I can uh, play a little with the precision. I can change it to uh, try to get uh, the results that I feel more comfortable or that I trust more. Here I see the 92.9% .9 of, of match records and well, the rules that, that are shown. And I actually can see uh, which records are, are were part of this uh, of this rule or, or this uh, showing note that this matching. I can see this here. I, I can also download it if if I if I want. So after matching, what I need to do is uh, the merge step. So on the fourth tab, we can see here all the customer fields. Uh, first, we see the, the ones that weren't uh, match, uh, and then we, we can see the fields that were match. And for each one of these fields, I can edit uh, the criteria. So I, I, I can change if I want uh, if I want to change something about the this matching on, on the first name, for example, uh, I can go to the menu, I can uh, go to edit, and I could uh, define, uh, for example, if I if I want to, in this case, just for this uh, this field in particular, if I want to change the importance. So, the, the, mm, what what will happen here? Uh, if I find uh, uh, the value of the first name on the first uh, entity, it will be uh, the first choice to, to use. If it's empty, it's going to look into the second entity. But if I know that this field in particular is uh, it, it has a better quality on the second uh, entity, I can change it just for one field or, or for a few fields if that's the case. So you have the the, the e-commerce contacts that will be the first choice for every every other uh, any other uh, field, but for first name it's going to be the uh, loyalty customers that's going to be choose. Uh, so then I have a contact ID from the loyal customer that it's okay. It, it, it is the primary key on, on the loyal customer. So it's okay. That it wasn't much, but I will change the name to uh, prevent any confusion because contact ID. Uh, it's also the primary key for for the e-commerce contact uh, list or entity. So I change it, and I just have to uh, save and run, uh, or I just could run and it will save it uh, also. It will. Uh, uh, it's, it, it has some de delay on this processing. So fast forwarding again, we, we will be having all these processes already. And here we have, it's already done. So if I go to customers, I have my more than 5,000 customers. I could check into any of them on the customer card, but all the information that I have is the information on the customer uh, customer entity. So there's not much uh, information or insight yet. And for that, I need to work with the data. Uh, on that way, so how can I work with the data? The first thing is 
uh, I can create relationships. And uh, there's two kind of relationships between the, the entities. The first one are non-editable. -edit so that's because they, were, they are created by the system. But then I can create my own uh, relationships. This allows me to connect the, the data between the, the different entities. Then we have the measures. And this is, uh, again, if you work with Power BI, uh, this is something that you will be familiar uh, from the right, sorry. Uh, you have the customer attributes. These are uh, single fields on the customer. And it will re reflect something like an, a score, a value, or some kind of state. Uh, then we have the customer measures. Those are uh, insights on the behavior on uh, the customers. Uh, and then on the first uh, point, we, we have the business measures. Those are also um, some measures, some, it, it tracks business performance or, or the health of the business. And we'll see some examples uh, on the next slide. Uh, then we can uh, modify, we can work with the customer page on, on how we search. Uh, we can create different kind of segments. Uh, we, we will see some examples also. So uh, we, we can create a static segment, we can create dynamic segments. And of course, the the point of that is to integrate with, with another tool, with another solution. And finally, we can uh, create and uh, we can define what is an activity into in in the system and this is important because uh the activities it's going it's going to be a, a big part of the integration between um customer insights and the next 365 customer engagement uh because it will allow you to uh enrich the the 360 degree view on, on customer engagement with many activities that happens in many other systems or, or, or places uh, online and offline virtual or physical activities uh, and this information it's important to to match it correctly and and to compute it correct correctly to to use it not only in customer insight for segmentation purposes but also to to bring more information into into dynamics so jumping again uh, into customer insights we have uh, here on the home, we, we don't have any segments or insights yet, and we will work on that. The first thing to do is to create the relationship between our customer and the different uh, entities that we already create on, on the ingestion. So we create a new relationship. We have to determine, uh, define the, the name. Uh, in this case, uh, it's going to be the, uh, the customer purchases uh, and it, it's going to be for, for the e-commerce. So uh, we are going to select for the first entity, the e-commerce purchases for the target uh, entity. It's going to be uh, the customer entity that Customer Insights creates uh, after the merging. Uh, it's going to be an N to many to one uh type of uh, relationship and i'm going to match it or i'm going to to connect it by the customer the contact id sorry uh i want to create another relationship in, in now it's going to be the uh point of sales uh purchases so it's going to be the, the customer purchase uh, point of sale and it's going to be the same uh in this in this case going to the 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 first entity is going to be um, the purchases on the point of sale. The second is going to be the customer on customer insight. And it's going to be an end to one relationship. And it's going to be, uh, I, I'm going to look through the uh, loyalty ID. That's going to be the, the, the criteria uh, I'll use to, to create this relationship. So. Doing this, I have these two relationships, and now I can start working with them uh, by creating uh, measures, uh, knowing this relationship. So, if uh, I go to measure, and 
I will be able to, to do that. This is the problem with, when you edit the video and, and you don't realize the, 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 the time. So uh, <laughs> I create a new measure. It's going to be a business measure. And I'm going to, uh, I want to know the average um, spent, uh, the, the, the average um, purchases based on, on store and on, on web. So I define the internal name, I define the label, so it's, it's more uh, readable. And then I have to define first. The first thing is I have to define the entities on on, on which I, I'm going to be working. So it's going to be the purchases. Uh, there's no variable here, and I want uh, to define the, the measures. So it's an average. It's going to be on this this entity in particular, and it's going to be the total price because that's the amount of money they they spent. Um, I'll choose the, the name, the internal and the display name, and that's all. And now we'll have the first uh, business measure on customer insight. So let's save, and as I mentioned before, uh, I will create also the average uh, web purchase value. Uh, it, it is refreshing because it's processing all the information. It's another business measure. It's going to be uh, the average web purchase value. And changing the display name. I just copy the, the name and I change the display name without wanting to. So next, and now the entity is going to be the e-commerce purchases and it's going to have the same logic, the average on the uh, total price uh, on that entity. So uh, moving forward, it's the total price. I changed the display name and it's already done. So I have the two uh, first measures, both are business measures. And uh, now I want to create a, a customer attribute. Uh, so I, I, I can have a both uh, type of experiences. Uh, for a customer attribute, uh, I'll create the lifetime spend. So I uh, go to new customer attribute. This is remember this is a single field on the customer profile. So it's the lifetime spend. I'll change the label also. And uh, the first thing we, we see is that the customer from customer insight is selected and I cannot unselect it. And it makes sense because it is a customer attribute. So I have to choose uh, the new entities that I might need to, to perform the this measure of this attribute. It's going to be in the e-commerce uh, purchases and the point of sale purchases. I need both, uh, both entities. And in this case, I will use a variable and it's going to be uh, the sum of both total prices. So I only need to uh, set the name and then I have to uh, create an expression with uh, using the, the fuels or static information that I, I need uh, from the entities that were selected before. So I choose both total prices. I have now my variable and the only thing I need to do is to choose now on the function. I need the sum. I, I won't use the average. So it's going to be the sum. Then I won't select an entity. I will select the variable. It's going to be the only one I have, the lifetime spend. 
and it's already done. And now I have my first uh, measure. There are a few other measures on, on the exercise, and, and again, I created on uh, for for the example, uh, but it's 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 the same. So I fast forward, and now I have my six measures, uh, and I uh, now I want to know how they look. So I can preview these measures from uh, this view. I can see the information. If it's a customer uh, attribute, I will see uh, like a, a table. And I can go to home. I have now my two insights, my business um, measures. And if I go to a customer, I will be able to I mean, see on, I... the... the I'm in love anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the cat, the dog, I'm in love with all of them. Uh, sorry. Uh, 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 I, th I think I someone uh, unmuted. Unmuted. Themselves. Yes, and yes. I, 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 I uh, did trust me. Sorry. <laughs> I yeah, wasn't no prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure that everyone is awake. Um, can we? So, can we just ask everyone to make sure that you continue to be on mute. Uh, thank you. I think yeah, they are. They muted themselves back. <laughs> Perfect. So on, on the profile on the customer card, I have the the two uh, customer attributes already added. So I I, I don't have to do anything. It deploys uh, automatically. So now with these measures, I will work with a segment. Uh, I can create a segment from blank uh, from here. I can say it's a dynamic or static segment. Or if I go to the new button on, on top on the ribbon, I can create from a measure. So this is going to be the first one. I'll have to select which measure is uh, that I'm going to use, which operator uh, it's going to be greater than, and I'll choose a value uh, 138. And I can review the results, uh, what's going to look like this segment. If I agree with the, the, the segment, I can uh, set a name, uh, an internal name. It's going to be high value customers and a display name. Uh, that's going to be the same with the, with the spaces. And I, I just save it. Uh, but as I mentioned, I can create a, a segment from, from blank. Uh, in this case, this uh, segment is Q. So it's, it's working already, it's processing and it's counting all the members. Okay. Uh, if I go again to the ribbon, I can add a blank segment. I will define it as a dynamic one, and it might be a summer promotion uh, segment, uh, and it's going to be based on the customer's information, and I will be able to use it with dynamics marketing, or, or I can export it with with any other uh, solution. So the first thing is I have to define which is going to be the filter, it's going to be a measure, it's going to be uh, a information from the profile, so I can select the measure. Uh, it shows me the different uh, measures. I can select the operation that I want to, uh, to perform. It's going to be greater than or equal to, sorry, uh, yes, greater than or equal to, I think it's going to be. Uh, And uh, yes, I select. Uh, it's going to be 113. And I want to add more uh, criteria. I can choose the and and the or uh, operators. So it's going to be, uh, it's, no, it's not going to be another customer measure. It needs to be a customer uh, related entity. So it's customer uh, itself. I want to filter by the uh, date of birth so I can choose dynamically the the, the date so I, I, I can say mm, on the past seven days on today etc et or I can choose uh, a static uh, date for for the criteria so I will choose because it was part of the of example 
uh, December 31, 1996. And uh, well, you can choose any other kind of information to uh, to these uh, conditions, to these segments. Uh, so it's 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 really similar for for we are uh, what we are used to do with with dynamics. So I'll choose all, all, all the records also and just save it. And it's working now. I want to uh, if I want to activate it, yes. And it's on. I can see that the, the first one is already uh, as a successful uh, segment, and the second one already is. And now I can start using these segments, or I, I can go to home and see the information on my segments uh, with the, the inside the business measures. If I want to go a, a little deeper, I can go into a segment and I can analyze uh, the size of the segment through the days, or I can see the members of the segment uh, right there. And I, if I want, I can download it from uh, from the here. Well, going a little uh, faster because um, the time is going off. Uh, you can enrich the data using if you are in the US using uh, uh, out, an out of the box functionality that use data from Microsoft Graph. Uh, and you just have to define the industry uh, or the the different uh, brands or interested that you want to to bring uh, data uh, into the system. Uh, you need to define the the similar profile, so the, the demographic segment that you want to uh, to enrich, and just run it. Then you you can add also. Uh, artificial intelligence into customer insight. You, if you have uh, information from customer data service, if your customers are on customer data service, you can uh, use the predictions that are built into customer insight, or you can build your own custom models using uh, machine learning. And uh, from the integration perspective, there are several uh, integration scenarios between Dynamics 365 and customer insight. Uh, from marketing to sales to service, and the idea is to improve the processes and, and give more personalized experiences to the customers. Uh, for uh, sales and customer insight, as I mentioned before, you, you can add these kind of uh, insights as part of the of the form or as the mm, free, uh, 360 degree uh, view of your customer. And from the sales and marketing perspective, you can integrate also the segments. For sales, it's on preview, and you can create a marketing list. And for segments, it's segments in, in marketing. Uh, talking about the Power Platform, we have the Power BI integration. It's really easy. You just need to have at least two data sets uh, unified in customer insights, and you are ready to go. There, there's no, no, not, not much things to do. And from Power Automate perspective, you can, uh, this is also in preview, uh, you, you can use uh, Customer Insight as a, as a trigger uh, to uh, be in control on uh, if the, the, the refresh of, on, or for data source, it's, it, it's okay or, or it fails, or you, if you want to have any notification on uh, the segments, if they cross any kind of threshold or also a business measure, you can you can do that. And you can also create items or get items or different kind of actions uh, using Power Automate uh, to integrate with customer insights. And for me, the, one of the more powerful integration is the Power Apps integration because it's allow, it allows you to deal custom applications with all the customer inside customers and unified activity information. There are several um, examples of that, of this in the CDX portal, uh, xdemos.microsoft.com. Uh, there, I believe this 10 or 12 different industries examples. Uh, 
it, 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 it's really powerful what you can do here. Uh, the important thing is, of course, it's a premium connector, so uh, that's that's something to work with. Um, to finish with with the presentation, uh, how you can start with with customer insight. Well, the first thing I think is to get familiarized with the solution, get a demo slash trial environment. Uh, they are ready to use. They have uh, demo uh, information, demo uh, yes, demo information for you to uh, play with the customer cards. Uh, of course, if you are a, a customer, you want to implement it on yourself. Uh, the first thing to to do is to analyze your your system architectures to understand where is your customer data and and start making this uh, blueprint. Of course, get trained. There are a lot of resources from Microsoft uh, for the partners, for all the community. So it's it's material ready to use. And if you need a specialist, of course, uh, reach one. Uh, Microsoft knows which partners are uh, certified on customer insights. And of course, Microsoft always can provide the, the right uh, guidance. So, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, my contact information in case you want to to uh, get in touch. Uh, shall, uh, I have to to say that the blog is in Spanish, so not many English uh, post. But well, th th this is my my contact information, and thank you all of you to to being here today. Thanks very much, Fernandez. That's uh, sorry, Nicholas. That's very um, interesting um, session. Really appreciate it. Um, I think if you can have a look at the chat, um, I don't know if you can see uh, any messages that are. Um, yeah, there is a question. Quite a few actually. It's just I don't know why my Teams is a bit slow. That's why it takes me time to come off uh, mute. But um, yeah, there's a few questions. There's a question from Arthur. Uh, what are the fulfillment options for this really cool analytics? Do you have any ideas in mind? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't think I fully understand the, the question. What do you mean with fulfillment, fulfillment options? Sorry. Um, Arthur, do you want to um, come off mute and uh, ask a question? Yeah, I mean, oh, hi, Nicholas. Uh, it's just a very simple question. It's you, you've shown us some really cool analytics that you can do with customer data. Do you have any ideas what can companies actually do with this? Well, yes. Well, th th there are different use cases. Uh, uh, a rare one is to use uh, as an insight tool for HR, uh, HR slash internal marketing. Uh, to understand the behavior of the of the employees on all the internal communications and all the activities that they do with the company, this is something that with some customers actually we we are starting to talk. Uh, and then of course the the marketing integration is I think it's on the current uh, days and all the COVID nineteen situation that you need to really uh, focus your resources on, on the right customers. It's one of the most important use cases uh, for portals slash chatbots. I, I didn't get what you were thinking. And for sales and customer service, of course, what, what I mentioned uh, to bring all the information to the uh, to the CRM and bring all these uh, activities from different sources uh, without need, needed to integrate and without uh, needed to have a uh, a really um, hard integration project on front of you. It's I, I I think it's really it's really win situation for the customer. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Nicholas. Um, I think there are no more questions at this point. Really interesting session. Uh, again, once again, really appreciate your. Um, time and, and giving away um, your stuff today to, uh, to talk to us about your experiences on Customer Insight. Um, I will stop the recording now and um, uh, for everyone